Gabrielle Binder, costume designer for The Queen's Gambit, uh, orphaned at a tender age of nine. Prodigious introvert Beth Harmon, played by Anya Taylor Joy, discovers and masters the game of chess in 1960s America. A child stardom comes at a price. Actually, Gabrielle, I wanted to start uh, there with you. You have to, you know, you're dressing Beth as a character from, you know, as um, Anya's playing a teenager into her early 20s. And I think the costumes really evolve with her as she kind of grows up. Can you talk a little about, you know, how you evolved her her wardrobe uh, to go along with it as the show move forward in time? Yeah, we um, used her wardrobe to show her uh, growing up and to uh, collecting experience and to finding herself. So uh, we we start with her in the childhood and all is what we see on the very small Anya, uh, uh, sorry, Beth, um, stays important for later on. So, for example, the first uh, green dress, uh, what she's wearing in the car accident, uh, becomes like her home color and uh, comes back later when she uh, feels back home with herself. And in between, she has this long traveling to find herself, to grow up, to find somebody to belong to. And uh, in the same time to be on this chess uh, straight way forward um, and um, a little bit like autistic genius, you know, she kind of forget all the world beside her. And sometimes she realized, oh, there are people around me and everybody is different, but she is on her way just with the chess. And um, so uh, we, try to find her back with the colors later on when she uh, finding herself and uh, the rest of the traveling goes with the colors of the location so actually our color concept was going about that we uh, have different colors for different location and then i adapted her as she is more adequate in the location or she feeling more adequate, then she had used more the colors of the location. Or if she feel a little bit awkward in some situation, we uh, went against the color concept with her colors. That's, that's really interesting. Can you talk about, I guess, you know, like your, it's a very recognizable era of the 1960s, but you don't have to like, you know, not recreating necessarily a real life figure. I guess, can you talk a little about, um, you know, like, what you were inspired by, like looking like from that era, like any specifics or any kind of like research that you did to like, you know, kind of like help hone her her wardrobe. Yeah, first of all, I I was inspired by chess because I thought um, that that's the point where everything is starting for her, even if it's not about chess. So I I just try to find out what is in chess and what's interesting for the costumes. What is in chess, like. Um, you know, the geometry, the sculptural, the win or lose, you know, this kind of straightness. It's nothing floral or lovely. It's um, just this fighting. And I try to express this in her costume also. Then, of course, uh, we uh, started in the 50s and we put all the Lexington and her high school time a little bit backward in the 50s to stretch uh, her story longer and to use it for uh, her growth. So we stretched it actually a little bit backwards in the 50s and then into the 70s because she went to Paris and let's say Paris was a little bit ahead, so we could go further and use something what actually came um, in the rest of the world in the early 70s. Um, and I think all the 60s fashion was really very close to the sculpture geometrical thing, what is in chess, and it worked very well for our story. I mean, you mentioned that I, I, in the the finale, I think a, a showstopper costume or wardrobe for her is the the white uh, the white trench coat and her white gloves and the white you know she's all dressed in white at the very end. Uh, literally looks like a, a queen. Uh, I, I, can you talk a little about like yeah. you know that costume because I think that's that's such a lasting image from the series. Yeah, yeah, that was the idea. You know, uh, after she won all, 
we had to make a finishing statement. And when I saw the location, I thought, oh, this rose growing stuff, what was there on the location, it looks, uh, it has the same pattern like a chessboard. And so I thought, oh, it's like she's working inside chessboard. So she needs to be a chess figure. So obviously the white queen. And um, anyway, it's with the message that the world is now her chessboard. She's free, she has won, and now she can play again for playing and its uh, competition is over for the moment. Uh, so, and also it's coming back to some kind of innocence and then she playing with the old people and it's a bit like Mr. Scheibel again. So, um, you know, we try to make it a round thing from to connect to her beginnings. Yeah, it's, it's it's really great. Can you talk a little about, I know Anya, when her interviews, she's talked so much about the wardrobe, I think, and the costuming and how much I think that helped her as a performer. Can you talk about working with her, uh, you know, to and, you know, like just working with her to create the look and like kind of like collaborating with her, I guess. I had, it, it was fantastic to work with her because she came in and she was best. She left Anya completely, um, out of the door also when she went to the set there was no Anya left this was bad she was so absolutely identifying and she had so deep feeling how how bad it is I mean she felt like best so it was like a ping pong you know uh, you present her something and in her reaction you see ah it's the right way to go or ah she doesn't feel uh, good in this but maybe we can use it for some weak moments for her or something you know it was really uh, expressing the costumes on her body you immediately know ah this is good for this moment and uh, dialogue with her it was fantastic can you talk a little about i think you know just pivoting off that a little, I think the response to the close of the show, you know, I think has been very uh, effusive and it seems like people are very excited about maybe like, you know, trying to recreate the looks or all these different things. I guess, can you talk about, you know, that that response and how, how you like, you know, how if, if, how rewarding that is, I guess, for you and to see like, you know, even like people like responding to the, to the costume so strongly. It's actually overwhelming and it's uh, still surprising because, um, you know, with Scott, the director, we just said it should be natural, kind of effortless costume. It should be not a costume or not something to really make a style, uh, to just tell things right and uh, find your point and find a point for everybody. So, and it was about chess. So I thought, yeah, we love how this looks and I think it's good told in a way, but we never expected this. and. It's uh, so overwhelming and people write to me so really wonderful things about what that all means to them. And um, yeah, it's a dream. It's a dream. You, I love also, uh, we just before we wrap up, I wanted to talk a little about like a lot of the the uh, men's costumes, which maybe I, I found also really interesting. And like they're very specific, I think each of the characters, I think Benny's look is like, so uh, just so like very, uh, you know, just like it look, he just looks like you would expect, I guess. And like even a lot of the Russian players and stuff. Can you talk about like you know, those individual male costumes which maybe aren't getting as much ballyhoo as, as Anya's wardrobe, but I think are very intricate and like very specific as well. I, I think you always need something like uh, somebody who's, who is wrong in the situation. So that's Benny because, you know, he's really not what you expect. And you also could say why this guy is walking in there with the wrong costume. But if you find something like this, it makes the interesting point. And you need an actor who is really strong and believing in, yes, I am like this. And um, that was with Thomas the case. And then it's just cool and okay and the right way to go. So. I, I think because he's there, he makes the whole chess tournament interesting and he helped everybody else to be interesting because of his difference. So it was fun to make him. Well, uh, Gabriel Binder, thank you so much uh, for this. The Queen's Gambit uh, is on Netflix. Stay tuned and we'll talk to you in a little bit.